Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. The rollout of 5G is creating plenty of new opportunities for CSPs, especially in terms of expanded services, but it's also giving rise to new ecosystem dynamics and partnership possibilities, all of which come with a new set of challenges. Well, to find out more, I'm joined today by Andy Walker, who is Global Lead Communications and Media Industry at Accenture. Hello, Andy. It's very good to see you again. Now, when we last spoke during Telecom TV's great telco debate, Colt CEO Kerry Gilder stated that CSPs and hyperscalers can form successful partnerships as long as the CSPs can drive value from the relationship. So how does this actually happen? How do CSPs and hyperscalers work together to drive this transformational value to their business customers? And what's the proposition that they can jointly bring to market? Well, Guy, it's, it's a great question. And it's something that every single telco on earth right now is partnering with often several hyperscalers in different areas to try to solve. Um, our perspective is that they need to start from position of, of strength, right? So, so what, are hyper, or what are CSPs particularly good at? Um, certainly the connectivity side, right? They know that business very well. They also start from a position of trust Right? They've built trust over a course of years. They have deep relationships in most cases with small, medium business and enterprise. Right? So, so first starting there, those are things that, that the hyperscalers do not have. And then I think from there, the question becomes, all right, in the relationship, where else can they play and how do they move up beyond those levels? Right? There are certainly sets of services they can provide and we're seeing, we're seeing them provide in a lot of cases. We're seeing the network guys are the, the CSPs are certainly doing network design. They're certainly moving into the space of providing security. They're certainly moving into the space of, of even providing, you know, billing and operation support systems associated with it. So as the enterprise customer tries to use uh, uh, looks for different services, you know, how do we build that? How do we support those services? So those are just kind of straight off type answers. but. There are plenty of cases in different industry segments where the CSP has moved in quite aggressively. I think of things like oil and gas and mining, where the CSP has brought um, with partners, with other ecosystem partners, has brought knowledge of ways to improve the way oil and gas or mining companies work, right? So they've deployed networks and they've deployed the networks in a way where IoT is available for the, the end customer in a way that it wasn't before. And I think that those looking for those opportunities to provide additional value add is a great uh, uh, place for CSPs to play. So let's continue focusing on, on services then, Andy. And one of the big opportunities promised by 5G is new expanded services, in particular for business customers. With the widespread roller of 5G, what does this mean for CSPs? And how is Accenture helping its CSP customers expand their digital services offerings? Um, first of all, I would break the CSPs into two categories, right? So the first are the incumbents. Um, all the businesses the world over have telecommunications services. They have networks. They've had them for years. And there are sets of CSPs that have been serving them. And then you've got a set of CSPs that are the, that are the challengers that view this as an opportunity to go grab share. So I think the answer is slightly different based on where you're coming from. I think for the incumbents, what the question becomes is how do they quickly rotate from selling their legacy services Right. In many cases, you know, big, 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 giant national telcos have built these networks that are global for their global clients. And how do they quickly switch mindsets where they're now selling the new? Right. Which is hard. It's painful because what they're selling now may not be as profitable and the, the contracts may be smaller, but they certainly don't want to seed the share. And then conversely, we've got a lot of new entrants. Right. We've got players that see this as a grand opportunity to grab share with small and medium businesses as well as with enterprises. And what we're seeing with them is they're really moving into the space aggressively with new offers. Um, they're partnering pretty effectively with some of the hyperscalers to bring edge and 5G offers to, to campuses, to medium businesses that weren't there before. So I think the business market is really exciting right now, but I think it's a little dangerous, right? Because I think everybody sees opportunity. Well, it's so good that the opportunity is there. Uh, and innovation, of course, requires investment. Uh, and I find it absolutely fascinating that Accenture reports that CSPs are investing a lot in their core functions and networks, but relatively minimal amounts in R&D. 
all while seeing their ARPU remaining flat. So how do you see CSPs recouping their investments and growing their business reach? I, mean, this, I think this is the question of the day, which is if you think about the cost associated with 5G networks, right? You're talking about trillions of dollars being invested globally to build out these new networks. You have to lay a tremendous amount of fiber associated with the backhaul. Um, and then in many cases, right, it's unclear whether or not they're going to be able to price up their, their, their consumer market, right? So it's not a good proposition, right? Thinking back to B school, when you have to invest trillions of dollars and you can't raise your prices. Okay, so, so then it goes right to your question, which is how do they recoup the investments? Um, we're seeing a lot of interesting things happen, right? Um, first of all, structurally, a lot of shifts happening in the industry. So companies starting to separate their tower businesses that hadn't before. And interestingly there, um, in a lot of cases, only selling 49% stakes in their tower businesses. So maintaining operational control, but starting to rethink the corporation and consider whether or not parts of their business, they can bring in outside investments. So I, I do think the structural, um, the structural issue is going to pick up steam um, in the coming years. Um, because frankly, I think the telcos are starting to recognize that the sum of the parts may exceed the whole. Um, and we're seeing it in every market. So. So, so kind of take that as point one. Point, point two, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on all telcos to run their businesses faster, better, cheaper. So we think about things like AI um, being applied to care and sales. That's been quite effective. Um, we think about advanced analytics uh, deployed to help deploy the networks kind of faster, better, cheaper, right? And there's an awful lot you can do with analytics to really improve your capital efficiency and network deployment. Um, and then we kind of get to you know the next question, which is the other part of your question, which is all right, R and D, because you're absolutely right. Um, to be able to compete and win share in certainly in the SMB space, you've got to bring differentiated offerings. So I think the the, the point is you're, you're you have to deploy the networks. You're starting to consider structural changes. You've got a lot of efforts underway to run your business faster, better, cheaper. And then what your the hope is or the goal is to free up capital that you can then deploy into select verticals, right? So maybe if you're a telco, you decide you're going to go after banking or healthcare, and you're going to develop with your with your ecosystem partners specific solutions for those where you can really grab share. Um, but it involves a lot of decisions, it involves a tremendous amount of operational discipline to make this happen. Yeah, I'm sure. And great points there, Andy. Uh, at the Great Telco debate, your colleague Boris Mora closed out the open infrastructure session with the question, and it's an intriguing question. Will more than one ecosystem evolve around the hyperscalers or will the communications industry host the final APIs in this new integrated and fast evolving software based world? What's your view on this? Is there an opportunity for CSPs to change their mindset around ecosystem partners? And I think the answer is absolutely. Um, there is an opportunity. I think they need to move quickly. Um, look, 98% of the telcos out there, um, and I think we talked to almost all of them, want to move beyond connectivity, right? They're looking for what is the answer beyond that. Um, frankly, we think connectivity is a good business, but completely agree with them that they're, they need to find additional sources of revenue. So then the question becomes, how do we do that, right? And, and really to move up the stack, they've got to start to move into the API layer. They've got to start to bring devices into the business, into the home that can play an integration role. And just hitting on home, one of the things we're very focused on, and we talk, we're talking an awful lot and doing a lot of work with different telcos on is what we call own the home, which is about moving into the home and starting to do the interconnection between all the different devices, right? We all have tens, if not hundreds of devices in our house right now, most of which don't talk to each other. It's extremely frustrating, particularly if you lose a password or if there's a network reset. And so really, how can the telco move into that space and provide a much nicer, easier experience for the homeowner, right? And I think you can play the same question forward with SMBs and with enterprise. And, and really, I think they need to do it. They need to move forward quickly um, into this space. Uh, they need to pull in partners to do it, right? I don't know that anyone's going to say telcos are, by and you know, as a group, the greatest software coders out there, or they've got that skill, but they can pull in and form ecosystem relationships where they can develop devices, they can develop um, layers of software, and they can own that space. And I think owning that space really sets them up well to move beyond connectivity. And as you say, they think more of them do need to grab that opportunity. Uh, another area where there's been a, a big focus on recently is around sustainability in the industry. 
What does Accenture see as the major opportunities for CSPs here? Well, look, this is an area we're really excited about because we think that CSPs can really be the enablers of a different world and frankly, a reduced carbon world. Um, we recently published a paper with the CTIA, the Cellular, Tele Cellular Telephone Industry Association in the States that focused on what 5G could do, right? And so if you think about things like fixed wireless, and then even if you add fiber into the conversation, CSPs providing really fast connectivity to home enables work from home in a really kind of powerful new way. And I know we've all been working from home and in many cases we're sick of it, but one of the reasons we're sick of it is that in a lot of cases our connectivity is challenged, it's difficult to communicate with one another. So if you think about a world where we have ultra fast broadband that where we can work from home, then frankly what we start to do is we start to re reduce the number of commutes that we do a week, right? And so in the States, most people commute um, by themselves to work, right? And there's a fair number of cars on the road that are SUVs. So if you think about the carbon impact of starting to reduce tens if not hundreds of thousands of commutes, it's really material. Um, and, I, and I see, and frankly, we see CSPs really being at the lead of helping change how we, how we work, um, how we go and buy groceries, how we order things, right? So instead of having to go out to stores, you can just go ahead and order it. And none of that happens without super fast, reliable networks. So I think CSPs have the opportunity to play a really lead role in reducing carbon. And, and frankly, we're really excited about the opportunity for them to do this. And with that, Andy, we've got to draw our discussion to a close. Thank you so much for sharing your views with us today. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Guy, thank you very much for having us on. And it was great to speak with you again.